I want to give you guys a disclaimer that this is not a horse breaking clinic. This is an illustration. And Lord willing, tonight, within 30 minutes, I'll be riding this colt. But uh, one thing I know that will happen is every one of us in this building are going to have an opportunity, not just here, but to see a message. And the message is this, that every one of us are born, born with a nature. And the very nature and the gifting that God put in us by design is the thing that we're going to have to give to Him so that He can teach us what He created to, uh, us to do. While we're waiting on uh, this horse to come in, I want to give you what information I have about it. It's uh, two years old. It's a horse that was raised on a ranch uh, just outside of Las Vegas here. And it has got exceptional breeding. But other than being halter broke when it was uh, younger, the horse has been untouched. I can tell just by uh, my few looks that I've had at the horse, I've never touched it yet, but it's not a wild horse, it's not crazy, and it... <laughs> it just doesn't understand who it is yet. And so although it's not a wild horse, it's actually a horse that's come to actually understand and think that me as a human, me as a man, that I exist just so that I can keep him fed and support him. But what you're going to get to watch tonight is the reality that there are some special things that this horse was created to do, some giftings that were hidden inside of this horse. And those giftings are only going to come out as he yields himself to me. I haven't come to take something from him tonight. I've come to give something to him. And I believe for every one of you here tonight, if you've got ears to hear, this is the message that saved my life. This is the message that every man that you heard from would say that uh, rescued them from a life of just running with no end in sight. What you need to understand is that this horse it represents the things in every one of our lives that keep moving us. It's the things that we would say are the driving force in your life. It's what gets you out of bed in the morning and causes you to go do the things that you're doing. Jesus put it this way. He said, come to me if you're tired and I will give you rest. As Jeremy sings this next song, I'm gonna give this horse an opportunity to listen. And to the cross I know. And to the cross I cling. And of its suffering I do dream. And of its work I do sing. For only it my Savior. Both bruised and crushed Show that God is love Yeah, and God is just And at the cross you You become me yes, Draw me gently And to my knees and I To my knees and I am lost for words I'm lost in love and I'm sweetly broken Holy surrender That was cool There's still a lot of questions that need to be answered because this horse has grown comfortable around me. And I think right now he actually wants to learn. My voice, I'm good. 
But he's going to have to realize that he wasn't just created to be a pet. I wanted to become an actual part of its life. See, God said that he didn't create us to just be slaves, to just be people that had to do what they, their instinct was telling them. This horse's instinct is to live its life apart from me. His instinct is to live wild. But what he's going to get to taste tonight is freedom because he won't be afraid. He won't have anything to fear because I have expressed my love to him in such a way that he will be forever changed. I'm going to see if uh, this level of trust can go deeper. And I want you to be asking yourself the question, what does this have to do and what is it that you have thought God actually wanted from you? He is a father that created you for one thing and that is to have an intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. And out of that oneness, you gain new life. You become what you were created for. There is love that came for us. Humble to a sinner's cross You broke my shame And sinfulness Yours have been I don't know if you understand that you can see that this is a very smart, very gentle horse. But until this moment, it never actually knew what it was created for. The Bible calls it sin. It's something that every one of us were born with. It was this desire that wanted to make ourselves the center of everything. It's selfishness, it's pride, it's, it's lust. It's a nature that's in us that the Bible says every man has God and that it has separated us from God. But he said that love through God won the hearts of man to himself. And that because of a cross 2,000 years ago, Jesus opened the door. He made a way so it was that we didn't have to be slaves to our, to our nature anymore that we could actually enter into this oneness with him. A oneness that made it to where all of a sudden our life begins to make sense. These desires that were inside us, he begins to release those. There is a different way to break horses. You can force yourself upon them. You can put them in a pen, give them nowhere to go. You can tie them up. There's probably nobody amazed more at this right now than I am. I've uh, broken hundreds of horses. That's extraordinary. There's no trick. It's what happens when love enters your heart and you begin to trust and all the things that have separated you from the thing that you were created for begins to, to fade away. I'm going to see if he'll take a saddle because I want him to understand that I've got gifts for him. I've got things that made him incomplete until I gave them to him. And as he receives these things, he becomes 
a new creation that now has possibilities that are endless. Things that would never enter the heart or the mind of a horse. Because of what has happened to him tonight, he now, he gains me. He gains a whole new nature. A whole new capacity to do things on a different level that he had never done before. First time that she's had a saddle on, and it's a little bit confusing. And it's actually even causing her to doubt me. Every one of us have gone through those times where we look at what's going on around the world. We look at the tragedies, we look at the hardship in our own lives, and we say, God, why? I don't understand. That wasn't him that caused those things. Sin causes destruction. Evil in the world causes destruction. And all the time, God is standing, and he's waiting, maybe even pursuing, and saying, just trust me, because you, you've got to come to me. You have amazing capacity. And if you've never made a decision, if you've never trusted your own life to the Lord and said, you know, I am a sinner. My sin has separated me. I am tired of running. The world really doesn't make any sense. It's okay. If you allow me to have this part of your life, I can lead you places, I can direct you, I can speak to you and you can speak back. We've got to learn to yield all of ourselves to him. Because it's not just about a one-time experience. Jesus poured his life into a dozen men. He called them his disciples. And before he went to the cross, he knew the challenges that were gonna be in front of him. He's already spoken to you as you sit here. He knows what's going on in your heart. And he knows the things that are in front of you. So Jesus, he held up a grape, grape vine and a grape branch. And he says, unless the branch stays connected to the vine, it can never bear fruit. Do you understand that that was a picture that he gave those men and he said, unless, unless you stay connected to me, unless you abide and remain in intimate fellowship with me, you will never bear fruit. I've never met a person yet that says, I want to live a life that's fruitless. I want to live a life of selfishness and greed. Nobody thinks that way because God says we're created in His image and there's a longing in us for Him. And there's a longing in Him for us. And every once in a while we get an opportunity where everything stops. Maybe it's right in the middle of the PBR World Finals and you just came to watch some bulls and some amazing athletes and now God has just landed right in the middle of your world and he has said trust me will you not come to me surrender yourself to me 
all of yourself so that I can release in you what I created you to be. It's fruit. It's life, and that much more abundantly. It was the promise that Jesus gave to us. He didn't come to steal your life. He came to give you life. And I don't know why that happened to you. I don't know why you're so discouraged and why you're hurt. But I know who does, and I know that today he, he presents you another opportunity and says today is the day when you finally understand and you can see in a simple picture of a horse and a man. It doesn't work apart from him. I didn't come like this. I kicked and I fought and I ran until I had nothing left to give. Can you see? Do you understand? We live in a time where we're so busy. We've got so many things to do, so many places to go. We've got so much. We need hope. This is the hope of the world. This is the message that for 2,000 years has been rescuing lives. It's been rescuing families. It's been rescuing nations. And we need rescuing. Things are falling apart, but it's not too late. There's hope. One decision in your life can transform your family. One decision in your life can begin a ripple effect of changing the entire nation. It's the nation that we've taken for granted. Our forefathers, they fought and they bled and they died and they gave everything they could so that you and I could sit here and I could stand in the middle of a public arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, and say that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. He's the Lord of my life. He's the Savior of the world. And hear me out. And if you don't believe, that does not make you my enemy. I love you. We're not trying to perpetuate a, a religion convert you to a system of beliefs, but the offer still stands. It saved my life. If you would, I'd like you to pray with me. Father, thank you for loving us. You know my heart. You know everything about me. And I thank you tonight for revealing yourself to us. that this ancient message is relevant to my life today. I acknowledge that sin separates me from you. And I believe because of what Jesus did on the cross, that he made it possible for my sin to be taken away. And I yield to that and I give my life to you. Father, I ask you by the power of your spirit to feel us and every person in this room that tonight would be a marker in their life where they realize that this night I made a decision that I want to become one with you. And as an act of my own will and this public declaration, I submit my life to you.
And I do all of this by faith because of your love. And in Jesus' name, amen.